Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Viktor Moskvarecki. I'm the researcher at the Deep Pavlov. And today I'm going to present you our latest work on the image augmented multimodal dialogue. So to start with, uh, the, recent the recent progress in the dialogue system is astonishing. Everyone knows ChatGPT. And our team was impressed. Uh, how could we move this progress even further? And um, one of those primary advances is that dialogue models mostly focused on the text only. And so we were thinking about how to overcome this. And image to text models do not include context. And we want to work in the context of the dialogue. And so the task of generating response to image in a dialogue is not solved properly. Uh, it is, there are models, but they are very far from ideal. And finally, when we came to this task, we found absolute absence of the data set to this task. So uh, what we propose? Uh, we propose the generalization and simplification of the task. So now we will not generate a response to an image, but we will generate what a person tried to say with an image in the context of the dialogue. Uh, this will make uh, overall the pipeline simpler. And then we propose the new data set that we have collected and it is well validated. And also we propose the technique for automated uh, collection of this data set. Uh, this means we are not uh, using assessors and stuff. We're just taking dialogues and taking pictures and we're making multimodal dialogue. And um, as well, we're making the baseline models that outperform another models. And we're making methodology for uh, researching this task. Uh, so we have related uh, very heavily on the clip model. We use it uh, mostly as a measure uh, of the distance between the text and an image. Uh, we have a little relate on the bleep model. Uh, we use it first as a strong filter, and then we use it to fine tune to our task. Uh, also, uh, we have seen uh, the similar problem with the Chinese data set, and this is, uh, not the way we want to do our work. Um, and also, uh, we have seen another work, uh, but they have used retrieval model that is not suitable for us. And as well, uh, their data set is not validated properly. So uh, we have taken the couple of the dialogues, uh, the dialogue data sets. Uh, the choice was very simple. We want all the dialogues be human written. So the dialogues presented here are either collected with the assessors or uh, collected via English textbooks. Next, uh, the first task is to predict if the certain text could be replaced with an image. Uh, this is a very simple task for us. Uh, like um, if you could imagine some image that depicts uh, the text and you can replace an utterance with a certain image, then it is replaceable. If it's not, then it's not. Uh, and it is very simple uh, because you can think of like a girl in a yellow dress with the ball, but you cannot think about some uh, love and stuff. Um, and for this, firstly, we uh, have created a set of pairs for each utterance. We have uh, found an image for a big data set and an image was found as the arg maximum for the cosine similarity between embeddings from the clip, from the utterance and an image. And next we propose to use some machine learning algorithms for classification. And for this task, we have annotated a thousand samples from the daily dialogue. Uh, so next, I would like to talk a bit about features that are key in our model. And I think it is very important because it shows how the model could understand if the text is replaceable with an image or not. So the first model is very simple, is like the maximum cosine similarity between the utterance and the embedding, between the utterance and an image that are taken as the clip embeddings. And the second one is uh, also quite simple, but... Uh, a bit complicated pipeline. First, we extract e every noun from an utterance, and then each noun is scored with the image scores. So, and then we take the maximum of this. Uh, what we want to what we want to do with this feature is we want to say um, if there is some entity in the utterance uh, that could be represented with an image very well. The next uh, features uh, rely on the generation of the uh, text from the image. 
And firstly, we take uh, all our utterance and paid images and we uh, generate the captions for them. And after that, we uh, look at the cosine similarity between their embeddings from the sentence bird. It is like the measure um, between generated caption and uh, initial utterance. And then we take the below score uh, between initial utterance and captioning. Uh, it is notable that we take a below score only for unigrams because it was better. Um, and so the last one is the thresholding and it is quite uh, heuristic. We just uh, brute forced the threshold and found the best one for the cross validation. Um, so finally, we have modeled this and our task were, was to make a very strict filter. So we do not want uh, some data in our text that is that would be uh, corrupted or biased or stuff. That's why we're maximizing the precision, even we have a very low recall. So due to uh, big data sets of the dialogues, uh, it was okay. And we're val validating our free falls with four repeats. And we have, choos we have chosen random forest because of uh, its uh, best precision. And you can see the feature importances here, but, uh, I need to say that even if the maximum entity score, for example, have a low feature importance, it's still important to the precision of the model. And this is happens to the complexity of the task. And next, we move to the second stage of filtering. Uh, all this stuff going on uh, serves for the task of a very proper filtering. So we have a very clean data set. And the, on the next stage, we use the blip. Uh, for now, we uh, can think of the blip as the visual question answering model that sound like works. And here we will define the confidence uh, of the model. The confidence of the model is the sum of the log probabilities of the output token uh, for the initial utterance that we have. And next, uh, we have a little pipeline. Um, we first create scoring for the all images. So each image uh, will have um, and scoring with each utterance. And then uh, we create a set of N images and we'll choose some N. For example, it would be 10 and it would be top 10 uh, images for an image score from our data set for one utterance. And then we query the VK model, uh, like which phrase can describe this image. And what we expect to have uh, is that we calculate the confidence there and we choose uh, the image uh, on which the model was most confident. Uh, it means like we are choosing not the first uh, image by the cosine similarity, but we are getting N images with the top cosine similarity and then using the VKA model to find the best of them. And actually uh, this resulted uh, in a um, uh, very good manner. Uh, here we labeled a couple of a uh, couple of samples, and uh, we can see uh, that uh, here we have an image matches. It's uh, when the image matches perfectly, we have image does not match, and unknown when it was a difficult one. And we have some optimal n when we have the maximum matches, and this means that um, this approach really working. But we have obtained about um, 4,000 samples. And then we thought that this could be uh, not enough. And we obtained uh, 4,000 more samples. And then, but we have tainted them with the lower precision. That's why we're not confident them. And we have labeled them with the free assessors. Uh, here you can see the accuracies on the validated data set for assessors. It could be not very high, but this is due to the uh, bias across the first and the second class and second and the third class, which I will talk a bit later. But what is important here that they have a quite high interreliability score. Uh, so that means that we're, they were labeling independently, but uh, they relied quite well. And then uh, I'll talk a little about uh, how the labels were. Uh, so we have the perfect match. The perfect match is that utter utterance has only one sense and it is fully transferred with an image. Uh, it was uh, it was crucial for us 
to have no factual mistakes, no cultural specificity, and there were a heuristic rule, like, uh, could I possibly came to this phrase knowing the uh, context and uh, seeing an image? And there were a partial match when utterance has two or more senses, and one of them uh, is a perfect match. And there were undefined when image has some cultural specificity or when um, in, when the utterance sense could not be properly restored uh, with, the, with the context. And no match when there are factual errors or even no uh, entities were presented in an image. And so the methodology we created that resulted in a high interreliability. And then we moved on to, uh, ah, so here are basic statistics. We get uh, about uh, 5,000 samples. Uh, here are automatically generated and here are labeled as perfect match and partial match uh, from the assessors. So here we move to the model training. Uh, we are using the BLEEP model. Uh, the architecture is quite simple. We have an image uh, encoder. It's cross, cross attention to the uh, question encoder. And then it's cross attention with the answer decoder. Um, and then we have an answer to our question. So uh, we used a uh, pre-trained bleep. Uh, we fine-tuned uh, model with an image encoder. We fine-tuned model with a constant image. And we also tried uh, the zero-shot blender bot. Uh, we are using the prefix uh, language model learning, and we are freezing the LM uh, image. We are freezing the image encoder, and we are training uh, all the other encoder and decoder. So uh, here are some training details. Um, uh, we can see here that it was not a big batch size. Uh, we have tried uh, five models with different seeds to estimate the bias. And we can see how um, the text and image uh, model is dominating the text only model. Uh, but there's a strange thing with the uh, loss because it is nearly constant, but uh, our chemiatric blue is continues to rise. Uh, this, this could be a, a subject of our future study. Uh, and then uh, we're evaluating, evaluating on the uh, about 128 samples labeled as perfect match from assessors because we believe they are the cleanest one and we're using free beams. And uh, compared to the other models, uh, we outperform them through on the different sources of the dialogues uh, on the blue one and the blue four. And so here are some generation examples. The dashed line present uh, either uh, the generated with the degenerated with the model with the image or no image, and no dashed line is the ground truth. So there were a simple clean dialogues like "Good morning, sir. What do you would like?" And here's like a picture of the glass of red wine, and the model says, "I just got a glass of red wine," and it's actually something I'd like a red wine. And if the model does not know about the picture, it says something appropriate, but um, not in the sense of the actual phrase. And here's some phrase that is uh, quite the same. So uh, we got a lot of further work and uh, we would like to get better score for the first stage model. We would like to experiment uh, a lot more with the different architectures and we would like to enlarge the source data. That means we would like to have more uh, dialogue sources. We would like to have more image sources. Uh, also, we would like to uh, try to generate image instead of retrieval, but we are scared to do this because uh, the retrieved image are better. And we wanted to use the large language modeling for annotation through decision tree. This means like uh, this one annotation tree could be annotated with the, some language model or multimodal language model as well. And to, to conclude, uh, we have presented this uh, task properly of image interpretation in the context of dialogue. Uh, we have presented an automated uh, technique for collecting text image dialogues. We have created IMAD, Image Augmented Multimodal Dialogue Dataset, uh, that is appropriate for our task. 
uh, we have proposed a baseline model that outperforms existing models for this task. And we have proposed a methodology for image, images in dialogues labeling that resulted in a high interreliability score across the assessors. So I guess that's it. Thank you. So yeah, thank you for your talk. I have one small question. Uh, what is the source of the images you have now? Yeah, uh, I haven't mentioned it here. The source of images are uh, the big unsplashed data set that contains uh, three and a half million of images. Um, so this data set is open? Uh, not quite, but uh, there is a little trick. So you can we cannot publish the images itself, but we can publish the IDs for images. And it is a simple line of code that you can get these images via uh, API through their site. Or we can uh, share this data set uh, through like sending it via email. So it is fully reproducible, but with a little obstacle. Uh -huh. OK, thank you. I have uh, also a question, uh, yeah. really interesting talk. But uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, actually a few questions. First of all, uh, you have mentioned that you have a procedure, some uh, three like, yeah, 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 yeah. And you skipped uh, the procedure. Could you please describe it in? Maybe? Yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, we have uh, tried to label this data set with assessors uh, a couple of times. And we created this uh, scheme just because uh, the interreliability score uh, was very bad. And we were thinking about how to deal with that. That's why we created this scheme. And the scheme follows the same rule as um, there are in the labeling. So first you uh, think about um, is the picture, is the main entity, uh, is more than half of the picture than if the sentence contains more than one meaning. And if it is if if it not contains uh, more than one meaning then it not should contain actual errors it should not be specific to the cultural differences it should fully transfer utterance meaning and if no the missing part that is not transferred should be um, transferred with the context of the dialogue and uh, if it is not uh, restored with the context of the dialogue uh, the no, we ask ourselves if the missing part uh, actually contains uh, something that is the key meaning. And if it is not, then it's a perfect match. If it's yes, it is undefined. And uh, quite the same procedure for uh, when it is contained more than one meaning, uh, we just focus on the meaning that uh, image can transfer and think of it like it would be only one meaning in the all utterance. I see. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have another question. You uh, based your whole research on the uh, clip embeddings. I uh, totally understand this is quite like um, industrial standard, like the, right now. But uh, it is still um, for me. It's not really um, how it could be said. I, I'm not sure. It's uh, like really universal. Uh, do you think uh, uh, something about the yeah, changing? Yeah, of course. Uh, it is like one of the key features. and uh, We can see it for them. And uh, it is not mentioned here, but it is mentioned in our paper uh, that we were uh, doing a lot of experiments with different features. And we were trying not only clip, we were trying different uh, types of clip uh, with the different images that clip are trained on. And we have also tried, uh, there are a lot of models that are using the loss of image text matching. We have tried it. and. Uh, somehow, this image text loss is worse than uh, the clip embeddings, and that's why we have chosen them. So we have done a lot of experiments there. We have tried not only clip, of course. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, really interesting. 